I am Pastor David Becker, Pastor of St. John Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKIN Radio for broadcasting this service. Um, the service is also available online at stjohnaitkin.org, that's stjohnaitkin.org. At the present time we are holding in service, or in person services, excuse me, at 9 o'clock a.m. On this Trinity Sunday, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call, an ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our, so our intro, it comes from Psalm 16. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him, because he's shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me, because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he's shown his mercy to us. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you've given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith, and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, and I'll begin at the first verse. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. 
And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the second chapter of chapter 2 of the book of Acts. And I'll begin at the 14th verse, but continue on to verses 22 to 36. This is a continuation of our reading from last week from this uh, Pentecost Sunday. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw, saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, my tongue rejoiced, my flesh will also dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You've made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he's poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today for the children's lesson, I have a picture of a heart that's the kind of picture that we would expect uh, in the middle of February, not the end of May. It's a heart that we would see on Valentine's Day. When we see a heart like this, we think of love. And um, today we can think of love that parents might have for their children. A love in which, by which uh, parents uh, seek to what's best for their children, a love by which uh, parents provide for their children, not only the things uh, they need, but a lot of the things they want as well. But today I want to focus not on the love of parents, I want to focus on the love of God, the love of God. In the next lesson that I read, the Gospel lesson, we're going to hear those familiar words from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That's the love that God had for us. God so loved the world that he gave his Son, Jesus. Um, and we know what Jesus did. He gave his life for us cross. Today is Trinity Sunday, and as we think about the love that God had for us, we, we have to remember that our God is three persons, 
but one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in the last lesson that I read, all three of those persons are spoken of on Pentecost, the day on which Peter preached the sermon that we have in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit filled the disciples so that they could tell people about Jesus, so that they could tell people about the love that God has for us. Our Gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, and it's verses 1 to 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and bear witness to what we've seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his, one, his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here ends our gospel lesson. We continue now with the confession of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our text is... Uh, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, it's verses 15 to 16, which I just read, and I'll just read those two verses again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here ends our text. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Today, I want to focus on a small two-letter word. It is a word that can be used in a variety of ways. It can be used as a pronoun. It can be used as a conjunction. It can be used as an exclamation. It is a word that can be used as an adjective and as an adverb. It is a word that can be used in so many ways. It is a word that's used in our text in John 3.16. The two-letter word I'm talking about is the word so. That's spelled S-O. There it is in our text. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The question is, how is this word used in this sentence? Is it a pronoun? Is it a conjunction? Is it an exclamation? Is it an adjective? Is it an adverb? To help in answering that question, let me tell you that according to the dictionary, the word so is used as a pronoun in the following sentence. He is a friend and will remain so. There the word so replaces the noun friend. I don't think that is the way the word so is used in our text. As I said, the word so can also be used as a conjunction in the following sentences. It's used that way. Are you going to the movies? So am I. Again, I don't believe that in our text, in John 3.16, the word so is used as a conjunction. The word so, as I said, can be used as an exclamation, as it is in the following sentences. So it's you, or so what? Again, that's not the way the word so is used in our text. The word so is used as an adjective to express that something is true, as in this sentence. That is so. Or it can be used as an adjective to refer to proper order, as it is in this sentence. Everything must be just so. Again, the word so is not used as an adjective in our text. There's one more way the word so is used, and as you probably guess, that's the way the word is used in our text. You see, the word can be used as an adverb to express degree, as it is in the following sentences. She was so tired. He was so mad. They are so in love. In all of these sentences, the word so is used to show the intensity of a feeling. That's how the word is used in our text. For God so love the world. That word so shows just how much God loves the world. It is really surprising that God would love the world so much, considering how the world has made God so angry by its sin. Remember, God expects everything to be just so. He expects perfection, and since none of us in this world have lived a life of perfection, we deserve punishment. Just like the people in the story to which Jesus makes reference in the verse prior to our text. There Jesus refers to the time in the Old Testament when Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Moses did that as he was leading the children of Israel from the land of slavery to the land of promise. Moses did that because God had become so angry at them because they had become so impatient with God, complaining about how God was taking care of them. They were even wishing that they were back in the land of slavery. There they thought they had so much. This made God so mad that he sent venomous snakes that bit the people, causing so many to die. I dare say by our words and actions, we have made God just as mad. We have been impatient with him, thinking he is so slow in answering our prayer. We too have complained about the way he provides for us, thinking that he is so stingy. He must be so tired of our bad attitude. We deserve far worse than being hit by, by being bit by venomous snakes. In fact, we've, we deserve far worse than even just dying temporally. Yet the good news is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, who was lifted up not on a, on a pole but on a cross. This is reminiscent, of course, of that serpent 
that Moses lifted up in the wilderness. You see, once the people in Moses' day began to experience God's punishment for their sin, they were so sorry. They realized that they were so wrong in speaking against God. God so loved them that he instructed Moses to put a bronze snake on a pole. Whoever looked at that pole, even though they had been bitten, would live. The point of John 3.16 is this. Whoever looks with faith to the cross upon which Jesus was lifted up, will not perish but have eternal life. This means I'm going to heaven. And so are you if you believe in Jesus. That is so. And it's so great. And it's all because God loves us so much. I don't get it. It is so incomprehensible that God would love the world so much that he gave his only son to die that we could be saved. The thing is, though, I don't have to understand why God would do what he did. I just have to believe it. That's what John 3.16 is saying when it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The two-letter word so is so small it seems so insignificant, but there is so much locked into that little word, for it expresses the intensity of God's love for us. That's how much God loves us. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Lord of hosts, your ways are inscrutable and your judgments unsearchable. Through your word, give us an ever-growing understanding of the depths of your riches, wisdom, and knowledge that we may glorify you forever. Lord of hosts, you gave your only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bless the work of missionaries as they carry this gospel to the ends of the earth, that many may hear of your love in your Son and be saved through him. We especially want to pray for those missionaries serving in Puerto Rico, especially James and Crystal Neuendorf. We also pray for the mission work that's being done at Lutheran Island Camp as the gospel is shared with young people at the summer camps. Lord of hosts, have mercy on those who would deny the new birth of water and the spirit to infants and children. Open their eyes and hearts to the fullness of your grace that they would no longer hinder these little ones from being born again and seeing your kingdom. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service, and we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and for the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel, bless our nation, and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us, looking always to you from whom these privileges come. Lord of hosts, uphold all who suffer in our midst. Uphold them by your truth, that since you are at their right hand, they cannot be shaken. Gladden their hearts, cause their tongues to rejoice, and make their flesh dwell in hope. Lord of hosts, take away our guilt and atone for our sin by touching our unclean lips with Christ cleansing body and blood, that we may not be lost, but abide in your holy presence forever. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church. Thank you for tuning in today. I pray that you'll have a blessed week.